What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna go ahead and spray in the bed liner on my brother's 92 OBS. As you can see, it has the hard shell bed liner. We're gonna go ahead and remove that. If I have to, I'll cut up in pieces. It has some dings on the tailgate. I went ahead and purchased a U-Pull Raptor liner that you can buy on Amazon. So the kit included the four bottles, the hardener, clear container to measure out eight ounces and the gun the only thing i didn't include was the flow regulator now that's going to allow me to change the texture of the actual spray depending on the psi that goes into the gun picked up also some acetone some tape plastic drop cloth some wax and grease remover respirator some gloves they recommend an 80 to 180 grit the only thing i could find was a 60 grit for my grinder which this grinder actually has an 80 grit but it's kind of worn out so we'll see how it turns out so the first thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna go ahead and remove the liner assess any damage and then we'll go from there too bad it does have your typical dings and dents um, there's a couple down here in the bed of course this one they saw earlier on the tailgate but all in all it's not bad so the next step we're gonna go ahead and get the 80 grit sand down all the surfaces <laughs> Six and a half hours later. Now that we got the surface sanded and wax and grease removed, let's go ahead and mask off the edges so we can get a good clean cut. I better hurry up because it called to be windy later on today. So let's go ahead and get this masked off so we can get this done. Let me show you guys what I'm doing. I ran this black electrical tape to kind of signify the edge of the actual liner after I lay it. That gives me an idea how far down I want to bring my painter's tape. The guy that painted the truck, he did a phenomenal job, but I still don't understand why he did not paint this edge all the way down. So now I'm kind of struggling. Leave the edge of the liner low enough so you won't see it from back here. So it's kind of tough to do that when the paint job is not all the way. So that's why I'm leaving this kind of give me an idea how the liner is going to be so whenever i put my painter's tape i know where to leave the end even if i leave it right here you can somewhat see the edge of the of the paint maybe we can touch up later on that edge let's go ahead and finish taping this up so we can mask the plastic over so we can get this painted
here's a tip guys if you guys don't want to struggle getting that curve on these corners i have some knifeless tape laying around i put it down straight as possible so now all you have to do is put your tape over And just like that you should get a straight line I don't know if how well this might be like if you're using actual paint but being that it's a liner and it's thick I don't think the edge might be so noticeable if you look close enough it is a jagged edge versus the factory cut I'm thinking that the thickness of the bed liner shouldn't really matter anyway so we'll see we'll find out right now what is up guys it's been a few days since the last clip it started to get windy late afternoon so then I kind of slowed down thinking it was gonna get better on Sunday, but it just got worse. It's still kind of windy right now. If I don't do it today, it's gonna get worse. Tomorrow and the day after, it's gonna get windier and windier. I got a small window to go ahead and get this done. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cover this up real quick. Um, do a final wax and grease removal. <laughs> Painter's tape doesn't want to stick to itself, so I have to use some of the duct tape to reinforce the edges, but I got it for the most part. Hopefully nothing happens. I added a tarp for reinforcement when I spray this edge right here. I could have took the bed off and sprayed it by itself, so I didn't want to take it off and put it on the tables. Let me go ahead and uh, wax and grease, remove the whole surface. Alright guys, the way you adjust your, your flow, squeeze the trigger. As you squeeze the trigger, you adjust the flow back here. That'll indicate how much PSI is actually flowing through the gun when you're spraying it. Raptor recommends anything from 40 to 60 PSI, depending on the texture that you want. If you have a low pressure, it'll leave a thicker, bigger texture. And if you have a higher pressure, it'll be a finer texture. Each bottle is going to take 8 ounces of hardener. Now I just go ahead and shake it for 2 minutes. Now when you're spraying, if you get a glob land on the surface, just get a rolled up tape and then just lightly dab on it and it should eliminate it. Alright guys, this is the blob that I was kind of talking about. 
So the way we can take it off, eliminate it, is so I just roll up a piece of tape and then just dab it lightly. Kind of create that texture. But this one's a pretty big one. Hopefully I can get it all out. Now we just dust it. You plan on reusing the gun for future projects. Just make sure you clean properly. So within 30 minutes, you gotta go ahead and pull all the masking off so it won't dry up on you. guys finally even after with the wind finally got it done for the first time doing it it turned out pretty good this is the spot where i had that spill just be careful if you guys use the same gun that comes with the kit it'll have like a little breather on top if you tilt it too much it'll spill so i'm actually happy how it turned out all right guys if you liked the video just make sure you hit the thumbs up subscribe and i'll see you in the next one peace